everyone i hope you're doing well today um i am here with some updates so if you saw my episode last week um i did start a new lifestyle change last week um i started a keto diet so week one is down in the books and i'm happy to say that it was really really good i lost 9.6 pounds in total and um, basically for those that don't know first um, I am NOT a doctor I am NOT a nutritionist yet hopefully in the future um, I do hope to be some kind of health life coach etc but for now um, this is just something that I'm trying out um, I've struggled my whole life with my weight and just self-confidence and um, I'm basically on a journey to improve all of that and kind of fix all the damage that I've done to myself over the years, both mentally and physically and all that stuff. So um, a few friends had told me about keto uh, diets and ketogenesis and all that stuff. I heard about it about a year ago, but was a little skeptical. And I just, because of all the um, things that I feel like I've put myself through in the past in terms of trying fad diets and all this stuff, I just didn't want to jump into it blindly so I did some research and I just really kind of got all the information down before I started um, so I love it so far it's basically a high fat low carb or almost no carb so I'm having about 20 grams or less a day um, moderate protein and so far it's good um, I don't plan to make this a permanent lifestyle change I'm just trying to kind of get a little more um, a little leaner healthier and just see how it goes. I just like trying new things. And hopefully this is something that can help someone else out there that wants to try something new. Um, so that's my update, 9.6 pounds. Yay, so excited about that. Um, but most of all, I am just feeling so much energy uh, workout wise. I did all cardio last week because um, I did hear about something called keto flu that got me a little nervous. And basically what that is, is when your body is transitioning to running off of fats instead of glucose or carbs, um, you might get a little sick, lower energy and all that stuff. So I'm happy to report that that did not happen to me. I did not experience the keto flu. Um, it could be because I am a little bit used to uh, intermittent fasting. I've done 24 hour fasts, a little longer sometimes. I think the longest fast I did was about 42 hours. Um, fasting has amazing benefits. I know it sounds a little crazy to some, but don't knock it till you try it and do your research first and talk to your doctor first, first and foremost. Um, so I think because my body has been used to kind of doing different things, I did not experience any lack of energy. Um, so today I incorporated weight training back into my routine, which I love weight training. I feel like weight training is super important. So what I plan to do going forward, at least for this week, because every week I feel different and that's why I'm doing these videos. I will update you on what I plan to do and how it's going for me. Um, so this week I plan to do at least two to three weight training sessions with two days of cardio. Um, I realize that cardio is really important, but for me physically, I feel better when I'm lifting weights and, um, the most important thing I can say is listen to your body. Not everything works for everyone. So not one diet is for everyone. We're not all made in a cookie cutter mold. You know, we're all very different. So, you know, it might work for one person to become vegan and they can deal with that and have no health issues and be fine. And I applaud that. Um, and then for others, it might not be so good. So if you're going to experiment with different things, just be careful, talk to your doctor and monitor how you feel. Everything, um, goes by how you feel that's what you should be paying attention to the most that's something that i'm trying to work on i have been training myself all these years that the number on the scale matters the most and unless that number moves i start to freak out and i have to stop doing that i have to pay attention more to um how i feel how you know my body feels how my clothes are fitting and stuff like that um so a lot of work there now not only am i on this journey for weight loss and you know just becoming fitter but this goes hand in hand with a journey of self-love so i as i mentioned before and in my other videos um grew up severely overwhelmed overweight very depressed um just kind of not not really knowing who i was what my purpose was or anything like that i'm not saying i have it all figured out now but i am little by little getting there i think i think i'm finally learning how to be me and you know be happy and proud of that 
so it's taking some work um but it's it's good work it's work that's making me feel like i'm finally figuring things out so um this journey of self-love is not easy for me um because i was overweight because i was teased um, I was the only child. I was really sheltered. I just did not have any confidence in myself whatsoever. Really, really low self-esteem. And I just spent years and years just not liking myself, you know. And um, I read in this book that I've been reading, and it really resonated with me. Um, and I read that uh, we're born as bundles of joy. And we're born being so happy and just content with our lives. And you see that in kids. They're just so happy with little things and just you know playing and you know innocent and we're born like that and then we spend years unloving ourselves isn't that crazy you spend years unloving yourself criticizing yourself comparing yourself to other people just not being happy with with the things that you do and that's so sad but it's so so true and i know that almost everybody goes through that um, don't be ashamed of it if, if you feel like that's what you do I mean I think I have really really destroyed uh, myself and all these years I thought that this negativity that I was feeling was coming from outside sources I mean yes I had people bully me and even people in my family you know that I didn't expect that from but all in all you only Except you only feel what you allow, you know, to people to treat you. And it's just, I, I realize now that although all those things were happening, what really mattered is how I dealt with it. And I just didn't deal with it in a good way. I let it affect me. I let it bring me down because I just didn't know any better. And now I do. And now I'm able to separate that. Um, so anyway, this journey of self-love. So um, throughout the years, I have, you know, been trying to repair all that stuff, as I said. And... I have told myself, you know, like, I love myself. I do. I finally love myself. I'm confident, especially in 2010 where I lost, like, 90 pounds. You know, I felt like I loved myself. But then a few nights ago, last week, I realized that that wasn't really, really, really true. Um, I had, I don't know, call it an epiphany, uh, an experience. I don't know. But I was laying in bed with my daughter next to me, my little two-year-old, half of a tw half twins, if, if you guys didn't, you know, if you're tuning in now. So anyway, um, yes, my daughter was sleeping in my bed. Don't judge. I know it's bad, whatever. She sleeps in my bed. She, um, she was next to me, and I just started really thinking about this whole journey that I'm on and realizing that I can't be the mom that I want to be. I can't be the friend that I want to be, the partner that I want to be, unless I truly and really, really love myself. And a few weeks ago, one of my best friends, she's told me this before, but I don't know what about this specific conversation finally stuck, but she was just basically telling me how proud she is of me, how I've been able to accomplish things that no one in our group you know, has been able to accomplish and how she really looks up to me. And while she was saying it, I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, thank you, that's amazing. Um, but that night, a few nights ago, I was just, I, I agreed with her and I was thinking of everything that I've done. And it's almost like I started talking to my younger self and I started telling myself, like, you're, you're amazing. These things that you've done, the things that you've been able to overcome, I apologize if I get emotional, uh, it was really, 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 whew, it was a really special moment that I had with myself. And I realized that those times before that I said I love you to myself, I didn't really mean it. I think I was just saying it because I knew I had to say it and I was supposed to be saying it, but I didn't feel it. So that night I literally just hugged myself. I'm laying in bed and I'm hugging myself and I'm telling myself, you're amazing. You're, you're, you're just such a beautiful person and I love you. I love you and we're going to do this together. And it was just... I can't even really explain it further than that. It was just amazing. So I feel like that proved to me that I'm on the right track. I'm finally able to love myself 100% flaws and all because I am not perfect. No one is, but that's okay. I'm still me and there's only one me. No one else in this world is like me and no one else in this world is like you. And that's a beautiful thing. So that is my little experience that I wanted to share. Um, other than that, my throat is itchy. <clears throat> I have to remember to bring water with me to these things. Um, so basically, uh, that experience was really influential and it just made me realize that we need to really believe 
we have to see ourselves the way others see us, right? So you have people in your life, I'm sure, hopefully you do, um, that tell you these things about yourself. You're beautiful, you're, you're smart, you're courageous, and we have to believe that, especially if it's coming from people that we actually trust, they see things more, you know, than we see in ourselves. So we usually are so good at lifting others up. So if a friend comes to you and is venting to you, it's so easy sometimes to give that person advice and lift up their spirits. So why can't we do that for ourselves? There's something wrong there. We have to be able to lift ourselves as well and just give ourselves that love that we're so openly giving to everyone else around us. Sometimes even to people that don't quite deserve it. I say that loosely. I think everybody deserves love, whether they realize it or not. I just feel like, you know, there may be people in our life that are not as conducive to our growth and yet we give more to them than we do to ourselves and we have to try hard to change that um so because of that and all this stuff i am trying um to be on a spiritual journey this whole self-love thing connects with spirituality i've always been really religious growing up i grew up in a catholic household um going to church every single sunday and while i'm still you know in my heart completely um involved in my religion and my faith and and god and all of that i through more research not research but the more books that i read on on spirituality and um enlightenment i realize that there's so there's a bigger picture out there so if you don't believe in god that's fine what i'm saying is there's a higher source there's a higher energy um, and we're all connected to that one energy. So it can be God, it can be universe, you can call it spirit, you can call it source energy. There's so many words and it's different for everyone. Um, I usually, when I speak about this energy, call it either God or the universe or spirit. Um, it, I use it interchangeably and I'm really, really working on connecting to that. And there's many ways to do that. Um, one of them being, and what I'm currently working on is being present in the moment. Um, and just, they say, if you're constantly thinking about tomorrow, you're living in the future. If you're constantly thinking about things in your past, you're living in the past. You need to live in the present moment right now. Um, and that's not always easy. Uh, so definitely trying to be more spiritual in that sense. And, um, just realizing that, there's there's a lot of power in ourselves and I feel like so many times we wait for things to happen outside of us and the answers are inside and we just have to quiet everything else, whether it be through meditation or whatever works for you basically, um, but really delve into your inner self because we're super powerful and that spirit, God, universe, that source energy lives within us. Um, and we just have to tap into it. So as I discover all these things and ways to tap into that, I am going to share that with you guys. Um, it's already kind of made a difference in my life, I feel. Um, I feel more grounded. Um, is every day perfect? Absolutely not. The first, first, first thing that I realized and I kind of expected is that when you're going in the right direction, that's when chaos hits. <laughs> it really does. Um, I feel like... Some, it's something to do probably with our ego selves, you know, where we're trying to better ourselves, but because we're stuck in old habits, these things come up and it might be mental or it might be really happening, but these things kind of try to get in our way and block our path. And we need to be aware of that so that when those things happen, we can take a step back and realize life is not perfect, but I'm working on me and I can get through this. And you know, you, you give yourself a pep talk. Um, I've been doing really, really good on this journey, you know, since I started, um, not that long ago. <laughs> I've been, it's been a couple of years, but if you saw my last video, the last few months have not been very good for me. Um, for many reasons, I was not really paying attention to myself. I was back into bad habits and not just not eating well, not exercising, not, not really doing anything for me. I was kind of just living day by day as it came. And, um, I really made a conscious decision to really work on myself this time and this year. So um, I do see I do see a difference. I do see a difference in how I feel. Um, and then I just want to bring up also quickly the book 
The Secret, if you have not heard of that. A lot of people have. Oprah's talked about it. Um, it's called The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. I actually read it two years ago, but every time I kind of slip off this journey of self-love and, and enlightenment, I go back and I read that book. And basically, it's about the law of attraction. Um, you get what you put out there. So have you ever heard of the, the phrase, energy flows where attention goes? That cannot be more true. Um, we have to focus on the good in our lives. We have to focus on the things that we want, the things that we want to create, not the things that we lack because you attract what you put out there. So if you're always thinking about the negative, the bad things in your life, I don't have this, I want a better car, I want a better house, you know, I, I these things are not in my life, it's almost like you're saying that you don't deserve it. Instead, change your language, your vocabulary, saying I these things are meant for me, these things are mine to have, I'm going to work on it, this is going to happen for me. Um, you have to really, really believe that you're deserving. A lot of this work, only works if you truly believe it. Um, and as I said, it's it's tough. Um, on Sunday, I had probably the worst day I've had in a while. And it was hard to kind of tap into all this stuff because I was living in this negative space. And it's because basically my mom and I had gotten into a really big fight and my mom is my everything. So it really threw me off. And it was so hard for me to remember all these things that I'm working on and all this positivity because... I just kept on thinking about, you know, our past, our relationship, the bad things that have happened, you know, to us and just, you know, the, the, not the good that was there. Like, um, it was just really hard. And the day after things got way better. I got through it. I didn't, you know, usually I eat my feelings and I would have probably in the past been like, forget keto. I'm going to eat all the carbs I can. And I'm going to have this whole pint of ice cream to myself. And I don't care. Um, I did not allow that. Uh, it was tough. It was really tough, but I'm tired of making excuses. I'm tired of using these normal things that people go through as excuses to sabotage my own growth. I'm done with that. Um, and we all deserve better. So, um, with that being said, more in future episodes about the law of attraction and all that stuff. I'm completely intrigued by it. It's amazing, amazing stuff. And I promise you that if you do a little research and read about it, I feel like it really does make a lot of sense. And if you put it to practice and truly believe, I really do think that it can um, help you in some way. Um, so as always, I like to end my videos with a quote. I love quotes. I'm a quote queen. I love it. Um, so the quote that I want to end with today is in my new book that I left in my bag. So give me one second. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm coming. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. So I showed this book in my last episode. Uh, you are a badass how to stop doubting your greatness and start living an awesome life. And it's by Jen Sincero. So far, amazing book. I'm kind of like on page 72, a little less than half, um, but it's, I love it. I love the stuff that I'm getting from it and learning from it. So the quote, cause this is full of amazing quotes. The quote that I want to share with you guys today, it's from the poet Anais Nin. I butcher names all the time. I hope I said that somewhat decently. Um, okay, so it's, and the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. That really makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I feel like a lot of us stay stuck in old habits because it's familiar and we're scared of change and that's normal. Change is scary, it can be very scary. But unless we take that risk, we'll never know the greatness that lies ahead. So we have to be able to risk that because we deserve that much. Um, and nothing happens when you're in your comfort zone. I feel like all the best changes happen when you push yourself out of that comfort zone. So believe that you're deserving of that and make a decision. Think of the things that you do not like either in your life or about yourself or whatever and make a conscious decision to change that and work on it and put in the effort and don't just say it but actually do it um so with that many blessings i know this one was a little long i just have a lot to share because i'm feeling absolutely amazing with all the work that i'm doing and i just hope that i can help someone out there just feel amazing because you are you're amazing 
Thank you guys. I will see you next time. Um, I think that's it. Mwah. Have a wonderful week. Bye.